You have been predestined. You have already been preordained. You have already been pre-chosen. You have already been pre-called. And it is His good will. Mm -hmm. So anybody sitting in here today, you think, well, man, you know, what's my purpose? What, what am I supposed to do? What does it look like for me? Well, i got a word for you, and it says that you are of the will of God. Amen. He chose you. He predestined you. He called you. You are His. And with all that, glory to God. We should not have any more doubt. Welcome to the Sunday service of Kingdom Life Ministries International of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, headed by senior pastors Dr. Raynard and Delilian Romero. Today, Dr. Romero will be teaching on the topic, Stop Wondering What Is Your Purpose in Life? Now, here is the message. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, Pastor Terry was supposed to be here to share this morning, mm -hmm. uh, but I got a message from him. He wasn't going to be able to make it, uh, so that's okay. So okay. We got, we're going right. to move well, on. Yes, we are. Do what we're going to do anyway. Yes, we anyway. Are. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless yes. you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father God, for the oracles of your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that our mental state, Father God, even thank right you. now, has the ability to comprehend and receive thank the very you. things thank that you, you have thank for you. us, thank Lord you. God. Father, the word that thank we deliver today, Lord God, there's a heaviness to it. There's a weight to it, Lord God. But we pray, Father God, that even as we receive your glory, the manifestation of your presence, Lord God, we thank you that you're able to take it yes. and you're able to dissect it. You're yes. able to make it simple, Lord yes. God, thank you, Lord. that we may even be able to receive thank today. You. Thank you, thank Holy you. Spirit. Thank you. We give you praise today yes. in Jesus' in name. Jesus and everybody name. says, Amen. 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 Glory to God. So. Um, we have been studying a message mm -hmm. called the new, yes, just okay. the, new. the new, okay. Yes. And our leaders have taken that and they've ran with it, and uh, they brought their own interpretation with it on it, uh, which is good, amen. Okay. Uh, because basically Bro. that is discipleship, mm -hmm. and that's what the Lord taught his disciples. You, I'm gonna give you something, and I want you to take it, and I want you to. Uh, make it relevant not only to your life but also to the people that you're going to minister to you're going to teach yeah so number one when it comes to the word of god the word of god first ministers to us individually yes. amen yes, sir. amen then as we're able to comprehend that word take that word then we're able to release it into other people's lives mm -hmm. first thing is the word searches you the word checks you the Word enables you. The Word empowers you. The Word manifests itself in you and gives you the ability to do what God's called you to do. Amen? Yes. So, as the young couple was saying today, and the bishop alluded to it, it's the Word that's working on the inside of you yes. that's causing you to do something that you would not normally do. Excellent. Anything that we do is basically, when it pertains to the Word of God, it, it's not natural to us. Our natural manifestation of who we are does not want to do the things of God. Yeah. Amen? Y'all yeah. hearing me? That's good. Does not want to do the things yeah. of God. But it takes the Spirit of God that enables us to push through that. And so it causes us to be able to do what God's called us to do. So the new man or the new time or the new season or the new place or the new mindset, however it's been taught and released into your life, that's what you're supposed to do. Number one, it's the new you. It's the new way of thinking. It's a new way of talking. It's a new way of living. It's a, it's a new energy. It's a new concept. It's new understanding. Uh, we start off the year by the new year. But you know what? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's just one year to the next year, and the Lord has already given us promises that we're walking in. Amen? Amen. So, as we venture into the new, the new is now going to uh, transform into the new series called The Revolution. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to kick this off uh, called The Revolution. Now, The Revolution and, and the interpretation of it is basically a government taking over another government. All right, now. Which, um, y'all be trying to work with me on this because I'm still trying to pull the pieces together on this. And it's been a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and I've actually been meditating on this. So 
when the Lord gives me something, it's not something that I can just jump into the Word and I can find it exactly in the Word. It takes meditation. It, it takes thinking about it. It takes processing it. It takes taking a scripture from here and another scripture from here and putting the, all these things together until when it comes out, it comes out where there's some understanding to it. So this message is weighty. This message is heavy. I believe this. I believe that we have been living in what we call the church age. But I believe that the church age is ending. I believe that we are moving into the kingdom age. Amen? Okay. And we've been preaching and teaching on the kingdom of God. Now, there's one thing to preach and teach on the kingdom of God, but then there's another thing, as Pastor DeLillian alluded to earlier, is I'm not just a hearer of the word, but i got to be a doer of the word. So I can't, I, I have to stop thinking church, and I have to start thinking kingdom. Amen. So it ain't about a church that you go to. It ain't about a denomination. Yeah. It's not about a fellowship. Yeah. This is about a kingdom of that God has established before the foundations of the earth that he says at one time, at a certain time, I'm going to bring my kingdom and my kingdom is going to rest upon the face of the earth. It doesn't matter how you think or what you think. This is in the word of God. He is coming to establish his kingdom. But in the meantime... He has given us authority and power to go forth and establish his kingdom here. In other words, we are the governors, or we are the ambassadors, or we are the representatives of the kingdom of God. And we come forth and we are now planting and we are now establishing what we call the kingdom of God. It's a different way of living. It's a new way of living. It's a new mindset. And so the new ties into the revolution. Amen. So I'm going to uh, share some things with you. The foundation of the revolution is going to be Joshua. All right. Amen. It's going to be the book of Joshua. And there's a lot, a lot of information in the book of Joshua. Now, anytime that you see a scripture in here, you see a book, and it has the name and the title of an individual, it really causes us to really look at that in a different perspective. So, we have, we have the history books, so that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So those tell the history. Now the history, it's history, okay? It's past. Now we're getting ready to move into the new. I believe that there's a transformation taking place right now that we are moving into a new time and a new season, Agreed. and it's called the kingdom. Okay. Amen. We've been taught on the kingdom. We've been taught. We've been, but now it's not anymore about just teaching about the kingdom. Now it's actually becoming the kingdom. Some people might say, what church do you go to? I might say, I don't go to a church. And they say, well, why not? Because I am the church. Y'all missed that one, okay? All right, y'all, y'all, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's what I'm talking it's, it's a new mindset, okay? If, you, if somebody said to you, what church? You go, of course, you would naturally say, I go to Kingdom Life Ministries International. But the real uh, meaning to it is that I don't really go to a church. I fellowship at a certain location, but I am the church. Amen? I am the bride. I am the body. I, th these, are, these are kingdom a uh, 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 mindset, kingdom teaching, kingdom way of thinking. It's it, again. Uh, Pastor Dylan had this thought the other day. Well, for Easter, and we know Easter. We call it actually it's it's resurrection, uh, but we've been programmed to call it what it is, or what the world has put on it, or the title of the pagans have said and they call it Easter. Okay, but it's really resurrection uh, about getting smaller congregations to come together. Well, basically, that's what we see here. Uh, Bishop was talking about Colossia, okay? Well, it was, a, it was a group of people, a small group of people that would come together and they would do Bible studies or home studies or mm -hmm. home fellowships. It wasn't a church. It was a home fellowship. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, when you're talking about Ephesians, when you talk about Philipp Philippi uh, Philippians, uh, uh, when you talk about these other uh, places, these are not a church. These are a group of people that come together to study and fellowship and break down the word of God. Amen. Really what we are, we're just a small fellowship here. Amen. Amen. We're a small fellowship, glory to God, with a lot of word. Amen. 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 And so, 
And so when you look at the, the book of Joshua, so there's some comparisons that we have to understand. So number one, Joshua was the successor to Moses. Moses was not going to enter the promised land for whatever reason. We're not going to go into that. But the Lord had told him, you're not going into the promised land. So I'm going to send Joshua, your servant. He called him a servant. Yeah. Now, we understand that Joshua had some issues, and we're going to tap in on some of those issues because some of the same issues Joshua has are basically some of the same issues we have today. Yes. Yeah. Okay? We have these same issues, okay? Yeah. Whether you realize it or not, whether you recognize it or not, Joshua being the successor of Moses, being the understudy of Moses, being the servant of Moses, hanging out with Moses. As a matter of fact, he guarded the tent when Moses went in to speak to the Lord. That's how close he was. I believe that, uh, that Joshua was so close that he's standing outside of the tent and he could actually hear the conversation that God was having with Moses. Mm. Amen. Come on now. Amen. If you've never been in the tent, okay, uh, there's not, it's not soundproof. Amen. Amen. And you could hear right through it. And so I believe that, that Joshua uh, was able to actually stand on the outside and hear the conversation that God was having with Moses. Amen. And the instructions that he was giving him and the directions that he was giving him. And, and just the fellowship of having with Moses. Amen. Yeah. So that's how close Joshua was to all of this that was taking place. And so... When the Lord told Moses, well, you're, not gonna, you're not going to go into the promised land, but your successor Joshua is. So Joshua in the Old Testament is basically Jesus, the same name. Joshua, okay, Joshua, Jesus. It was a pretty familiar name when you got into the New Testament. We call it the New Testament, pretty familiar name. A lot of people, that's why when they address Jesus, they call him Jesus of Nazareth because they wanted to know exactly who this Jesus was, okay? Right. Because Jesus was a common name, amen? Yes. Just like a lot of us today, there's a lot of common names that are run in the family. Joshua, Yeshua, it's a pretty common name. The difference was who the individual was. It's yes. not the name that made the individual. It's the abilities that the individual contained on the inside of him. So we're looking at Joshua, and we're looking at Jesus, and we're looking at, at Joshua taking the new generation, everybody say new generation, new generation, into the promised land, okay, into a new land. When Jesus returns, Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to renew some things, amen? It's called the new heaven and the new earth. Right. Y'all following me? Yes. Glory to God. So, so there's a lot of similarities when you look at the book of Joshua and you look at the book of Revelation, amen? Mm -hmm. You're going to find that there's a lot of compatible things that you find in there. So Joshua is the man that God has chosen. So, when, so let's go back here for a minute. When I'm talking about the promised land, I'm talking about the Bible calls it the land flowing with milk and honey. It's a promised land, okay? It was something that was a promise that was made to a man that no longer lived anymore, right. okay? So this promise was given to Abraham or Abram. Yeah. Now, Abraham uh, was uh, out of a, a foreign land. He was out of a land called the Chaldees. He was a, pretty much he was a, a pagan, okay? Had no relationship. They, they worshiped other gods. But here, God shows up, and he wants to establish a relationship with this man by the name of Abram. Yes. And so the Lord says, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I want to make a promise with you. I, I want to have fellowship with you, Okay. Now, we're going to tie all this in together, so I, I need y'all to follow me because you have to understand, before I can move forward, I have to understand some things in the past yes. in order to yeah. actually establish where I'm going in this revolution. Amen? So the revolution had already been predestined before the foundations, okay? I could actually even go back to Adam. If I went back to Adam in the book of Genesis... There was already a revolution that was taking place. Yes, okay? God had already promised this man by the name of Adam that he created, that he put into this garden of Eden, yes, yes. that he had already had a promise with him. He had already had some yes, things established, had relationships yes, with him. Yes, Adam chose, he chose, he chose to go in a different direction. Okay? And there's a whole, I got a whole story on that. 
the whole story to mess your mind up. It's a whole story, okay, on why Adam chose, okay? Because if the Bible says that Jesus was the second Adam, that must mean that Adam was the first Jesus. Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, y'all didn't, didn't understand it? Okay. So, again. So, so here's the thing. So the Bible says that Jesus is the second Adam. Mm -hmm. So that means Adam was the first Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a lot of comparisons that you got to understand this. But here's the thing. When it comes down to it, God had made a promise with Adam. God had established a relationship with Adam that now is carrying on to where we are today. So Abraham... God makes a covenant with Abraham, and he says, look, he says, I want you to understand that the stars that you are unable to count, that's how your seed's going to be. The, the, the sands of the shore, that's how plentiful your seed is going to be. It's going to be that great. It's going to be that vast. It's going to contain so much that you're not going to be able to even count it. It's innumerable. You can't do this. And so he made this covenant with him. So out of this covenant, you have now all these generations that go through. You have Abraham, you have Isaac, you have Jacob, you have Joseph, you have uh, Jacob's 12 sons. You have Joseph who now is in Egypt. You have things that are happening there. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. So now you have Joseph who is in second command of Egypt. Now you have uh, Israel or the, the, the Hebrew people living in the land of Egypt. And this is how all this begins. But here's the thing. The promise, even though the man was dead, the promise is still good to this day. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Even though the man is dead, yes, sir. the promise is still good to this day. And so what we find Joshua doing, we find Joshua just going in on a promise that God had already given to Abraham hundreds of years before. The, 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 the astonishing thing about this story is that that whole promise even belongs to you today. Yes. That's right. Amen. That promise is yours today. Now that promise is only going to be satisfied if you believe in that promise and if you accept the promise. You don't have to. Amen. You know, one of the interesting things, and I'm going to get to some scripture here in just a minute. One of the interesting things is the Lord told them to go in and possess the promised land. And he told Joshua this. He said, every place that you put the soles of your feet, that's going to be your land. Right? right? Well, I was listening to this commentary, and the commentary said that Israel only possessed 10% of the land that was promised to them. Because they did not go through all the land like they were supposed to. So they got to a certain place, they stopped. They made camp, headquarters, and they didn't go no further. They never did possess all the land. They only possess, possessed a portion of the land because they did not go through to take over the rest of the land. So there was still a lot of land that had not been given to them or that they, that they did not take possess of, bless you, because... They didn't go forth. Amen? So, let me go here. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And it says this. And Moses went and spoke with those words only to all Israel. And he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee. And he will destroy all these nations from before thee. Thou shalt possess them, and Joshua shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. Yes. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Shion and to Oz, kings of the Amorite, and unto the land of them which he has destroyed. Yes. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that you may do unto them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is it that doeth go before thee. And he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, Be strong 
and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers, and to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit. And the Lord, he is it that doeth go before thee, and he shall be with thee, and he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Amen. Amen. So, so here's the thing. So one of the things that you hear repeatedly, 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 is do not be afraid, be of good courage. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think and I, I, I believe that one of the things that uh, really hinders us from doing what God's called us to do is that we don't believe in ourselves that we are able to do what God's called us to do. No. I believe that the Lord wants us to do a lot more than what we are doing today. Mm -hmm. But we don't believe that he is able to do it. So here's the thing. You've got a promise from God. What is that promise? God has given each and every one of us a promise. He's given us something to do. He's given us an ability to do something. I believe that we are actually uh, beneath our means of what God has called us to do. I believe that we're not moving in the things that God has called us to do. I believe that there's so much more that God wants us to do, and we're just not doing it. But the Lord said, be strong and of good courage. Do not be dismayed. Do not look at these people. But do what I've told you to do. So a lot of us today are not really operating in the fullness of what God's called us to do. Right. Amen? Amen? Go with me to Revelations. So this, what we're reading, is the story of Joshua. So it's not sure. They said that Joshua did not actually pen this book. They said there was somebody else that penned it for him. But the one thing that is inclusive is that they said that it was taken from his notes. It was taken from his memoirs. He was able to pen the things that they took and they put it into the book. So here we find ourselves in the book of Revela Revelations. So Joshua is the book, the foundation we're coming, coming out of. But in Revelations chapter 1, it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto them, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written herein, for the time is at hand. Yes. So we find that the Lord actually has given us a word. I believe that what we're going into right now yeah. is a time and a season that God has really prepared for each and every one of us. I believe that this is the time. I believe that God has called us. And you're going to, once we release this word, you're going to be, start to hear more of this thing. I had a pastor one time, a great man of God, and, and, and he said that uh, the revolution would not be televised. Okay? Well, here's the thing. I believe that it's going to be televised. I believe because of the technology today, we're going to begin to see things. Amen. I believe that even out of the two witnesses that are written in the book of Revelations, they said they're going to be seen around the world how they are mortared and how they are killed and how they are laid in the streets and how they have died. So there's only one way to actually see that is through technology in which we have it today. It's really interesting that you look at the two uh, witnesses in the book of Revelation and Joshua actually sends out two witnesses to go out and spy out the land. Amen? Yeah, they, 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 Moses made the mistake and sent 12, okay? But the Bible actually teaches us out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Right. So Joshua says, well, I'm not going to send 12. I'm just going to send two. Amen. Amen? And so you can see the comparisons between Joshua and the book of Revelations. How many times do you see the number seven quoted? In the book of Joshua, how many times do you see the number seven quoted in the book of Revelations? 
you're going to begin to see some comparisons. Why? Because here's the thing. What happened is in the book of Revelations is actually, we call it the last book of the Bible. It's really not the last book of the Bible. It's actually the beginning. Amen? Because the beginning actually will mark the end. There are some things that we look forward to or some things that we're scared about that we read in there that are denoting the end times. But there's also some parts in there that actually are the beginning. So when the enemy was cast out of heaven, he was cast to a place that we know today as earth. Yes. It, was, it, it was dark, it was damp, it was wet, it was out without form and void. And here lies the enemy and all his cohorts. Well, the Lord decided, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and redeem mankind, and I'm going to do it in the most unusual way. I'm going to create man in a place where things are already dark, already dismal, already looks like there's no hope, and I'm going to bring my people, and I'm going to raise them in a place, and they're going to take, and they're going to subdue a land. Yeah. They're going to conquer a land. And that's exactly what he told us to do. He told us to conquer the land. He told us to subdue those things. He told us to take those things captive. And so here we find ourselves, which the truth is, it's not changed much. The only problem is, is that most of the time the enemy has us captive instead of having him captive. Yes. Most of the time is we dealing with more of the issues instead of allowing us to walk out of the issues or walk above the issues. There's things that, that we have to understand that as kingdom-minded people, we have to understand the authority and the power that God has already given us to walk in and to establish his new coming kingdom. Amen? Amen. You are the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? You have the ability. So go with me to the book of Ephesians, and I normally don't read a whole lot of scripture, but I'm going to share some things with you. And it says this. So our foundational scripture is Joshua. Amen? We have a secondary, which is going to be the book of Revelations, because they actually mirror themselves as you go through that. And then the book of Ephesians, and this is what y'all were talking about today, um, prior to coming up here. And it says this, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus, yes. and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So he's calling them to the saints, to the faithful that are in Christ Jesus says, Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual Good. blessings Good. in heavenly places Good. in Christ, Good. according as he has chosen us in him Perfect. before the foundations of the world, yes. that we should be holy and without blame before him and love. Yes. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, According to the good pleasure of his will. There's a whole lot right here. So having, you have been predestined. You have already been preordained. You have already been pre-chosen. You have already been pre-called. And it is his good will. Mm -hmm. So anybody sitting in here today, you think, well, man, you know, what's my purpose? What, what am I supposed to do? What does it look like for me? Well, I got a word for you. And it says that you are of the will of God. Amen. He chose you. He predestined you. He called you. You are his. And with all that, glory to God, we should not have any more doubt. Amen? We should know who we are, what we're doing, what we're called to do. It's all part of his plan. And it says, verse 6, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved, yes. in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in our wisdom and understanding, yes. having made known unto us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in us. Verse 8, let's go back to verse, where he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and understanding. The Lord has given you all wisdom and understanding. That's part of his will for your life to have wisdom, to have understanding, to know, to have the answers before the questions even appear, to be able to accomplish things that you never thought you would ever be able to accomplish, to be able to do things that you never thought you would be able to do. 
It would just blow your mind if you would just step and walk into the things that God has really called us to do. Amen. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself as, as well. Amen. Because there's a lot of things that I might hesitate on. And there's some things that I might say, well, I don't know or I don't understand. And that's okay to have those things. But then sometimes I got to be able to say, well, you know what? I don't understand it, but you know it. And you have all the knowledge and you've given it to me. So help me to understand these things. Help me to make the right decisions. Help me to be in the right place at the right time. Help me to do the things that I'm unable to do. Amen? Amen. Yes. That goes for everybody in here. Glory to God. Those of y'all are watching, there are things, possibilities, there's understanding, there's knowledge that God is just trying to get to us to, that we may be able to walk in the fullness of what he's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Yes. In the verse 9, having made known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. This is a great mystery to a lot of people, because a lot of people will sit here and say, I don't know what the will of God is for my life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Amen? Right. I don't know what the will is, glory to God. But he says it's, good, it's his good pleasure, and that he has purposed us in himself. He wants you to know his will. Yes. He's not trying to hide his will from you. No. He's not trying to keep it from you. He wants you to know what his will is. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it, it, it's about walking it out. Sometimes it's about meditating. Sometimes it's about understanding. I think someone said earlier about reading the word of God. Well, you know, it's not just about reading the word of God. It's not just about hearing somebody preach. It's not just about that. Sometimes you have to take the word of God and you have to meditate on it. You have to think about it. You have to process it. How does this thing apply to my life? How does this thing apply to what I'm supposed to do? How does this word apply to who you purpose me to do? How am I supposed to do this? And I think sometimes we've been programmed that we want somebody to read to us. We've been programmed for somebody to tell us. We've been programmed for somebody to teach us. And we've not taken the initiative ourselves to find out, hey, what am I supposed to do? What's the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of your perfect will for me? Because I'm telling you, I can give people suggestions all day long. And I know this by experience. They don't take them. <laughs> Amen. They don't take them. I'm just telling you right now. They don't take them. We can do this all day. Glory to God. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you do. And guess what? They don't take none of it. They end up going out there and doing what they're going to do anyway. Amen? Mm -hmm. Well, praise God. But at least... At the end of the day, you can say, well, somebody did tell me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> somebody told me. Glory to God. And guess what? That will ring in your head quite a long time. I've been in some stuff that I know that I shouldn't do, I've done, and people have told me don't do it, but I did it anyway, glory to God, and it cost me more than what I was able to pay. Mm. Amen. 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 cost me more than I was able to pay. And I think if we be honest, that's all of us in here. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 10. That in, in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Okay. The dispensation of the fullness of time. There comes a fullness of time in everybody's life. There's going to be a fullness of time that the kingdom of God is going to manifest itself in such a great and powerful way. People are praying, well, I want to see the signs and wonders and the miracles that God did back then. Well, glory to God. Well, then... I say, do them. Amen? I mean, glory to God. Hey, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, at least you try. Amen? At least you prayed for somebody. At least you gave somebody an encouraging word. Amen? Here's what I learned. The more that I do it, the better I get at it. Amen? Amen. The more that I do it. And I can only speak today because I practice speaking. I practice speaking. I taught myself. I had people that taught me. I've been around trainers, and I've taught to be able to do this. Glory to God. I've been, I've been taught that you should be able to go out there, not have any notes, and be able to teach your class. Mm -hmm. I've been taught that, amen, and that's programmed on the inside of me. But I've also been taught a whole lot of bad things too, amen. Glory to God. You practice those bad things. Those bad things are going to be the one that's going to get you. Amen? Yeah. So let me go on. Having made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, 
that the dispensation of the fullness of time, everybody say, there will be a fullness of time. There will be a fullness of time. He might gather together in all, in, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in him, in whom you have also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you might believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. So some things in here sound like, you know, the, the, these are, are, are like uh, laws, okay? Documentation of some type of deed. Um, but I'm here to tell you it is, amen? This whole thing that we're reading right now, it's a law that is written in heaven, and God is going to cash in on it, amen? amen. He is go you have already been purchased. You have already been given the Spirit of God. Amen. You have already been predestined. You have already uh, uh, given the abilities to do what he's called you to do. Yeah. We have all been there. We are all in that place right now. The problem is the new you. Yeah. Amen. 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 The new you. Glory to God. Has the new you been able to accept that, receive it, believe it, and walk in it? That's the <coughs> issue right there. Yeah. So in all this study that we're getting ready to do, because number one, I'm going to give you the first part of the revolution. Amen. Everybody say number one. Number one. So the first part of this revolution is the revolution that's taking place on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. There is a battle that's going on. And the battle is between dark and light, good and evil, sin and righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on on the inside of you right now. Amen? Now, does that really stop God, hinder God? Or prevent God from using you? No, not at all. Glory to God. It just means that I can be more effective when I can come and find out that there's a revolution that's going on the inside of me. Yeah. And most of the time it's in my mind. And most of the time it's in my body. It has nothing to do with my spirit. My spirit man is alive and well. He's strong. He's stronger than he's ever been. But there's some things that we are struggling with. There's some issues that we have. So the revolution begins on the inside of you. Just like the Word of God begins on the inside of you. The Word of God begins to manifest itself out in your life. There are things that you don't want to do, but you still do them. And the, the, the things that you don't want to do, even Paul wrote these things. He man said, there's things. There's a, I found that there's another law that's working on the inside of me, and it's the law that does not want to do the things that I should do. But then I find there's another law. And the other law is that I'm working the things that I don't want to do out of my life so that I can become more effective for the kingdom of God. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And so we're working these things out. You are a daily project. Amen? Yes, You're a daily work. Glory to God. But if I get up today and I say, you know what, I'm just going to do wrong, then guess what? You're just going to do wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen? But if I get up today and I say, I'm going to live for God, Absolutely. I'm going to live for the kingdom of God, yes, then sir. guess what? I've already stepped in the, in, the, in the greatness of God. I've already stepped in the direction that he wants me to go. I've already made a confession that I'm going to do what he's called me to do. Yes. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's a revolution taking place. Praise God. There's a fight taking place. But I'm here to tell you, glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and let me say this is that God really is trying to get that in you now. A lot of us are just like, man, I can't wait to get to heaven. Man, I ain't got to deal with all this. Well, you ain't got to wait to get to heaven. You ain't got to deal with it. You can do it, deal with it right now. Amen? You can defeat that thing right now because there's, no, there's nothing that can prevent you or keep you from doing what God's called you to do. There's no devil in hell that can stop you. There's no sin in hell that can keep you down. No. There's no uh, sickness that will take you unto death. God has already redeemed us from all those things. The Bible says that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Yes. Those things are a curse. Sin is a curse. Uh, bad health is a curse. Being broke is a curse. 
We have already all we've already been redeemed from all those things. Amen. Amen. So glory to God. Our job now is to fight in the revolution. Amen. Right. To fight the good fight of faith because that's what He called us to do. He said, "Fight the good fight of faith. Walk in the things that God has called you to do." Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless you. We glorify and we thank you for the, your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your word and your ability to teach us, Lord God. Father, thank you that we walk in something that you called us to do today, Lord God. Thank you that there's an understanding, there's a purpose, Lord. And Father, we praise you for it and we thank you today in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Glory to God. Those of y'all that are watching here, Kingdom Life Ministries International. We thank God for you and joining in with us today. If you have any prayer requests, just post them. We'll be yes. glad to be in agreement with you and pray with you about any and everything. Glory yes. to God. We pray that the Lord is good to you. He's keeping you and he's watching over you. We're going to go out with a shout unto the Lord on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. God bless you. See you next time.